This is basically resemble, and then here a capacitor that is connected to the ground, an electrolytic capacitor like this one or like this one. This one we we'll find it as you can see in switch mode power supplies like this, and this kind we we'll find it in motherboards like this one, as you can see over here. Okay. So the inductor, its reference is L or PL. We have L. Do you see L15 for this inductor? How to test inductor? Easy. You can just use the multimeter and you should select the continuity option. I can just put one probe here and the second one here. I should get, as you can see, the continuity in the multimeter. This one, the same working principle, one probe here, the other probe here, as you can see. So, do you see here, we have 3 amps over here, 250 volt. So, this is the maximum voltage and amps that this fuse can support, okay? So, its function is protection, protection, okay? For this fuse, for example, we have 3 amps, okay? And 250 volt. So this fuse is blown out, is damaged because it could be the current that pass 3 amps or the voltage that pass 250. Okay, that's why this one is burned out. So to test it, as you can see here, we're gonna just put one probe here, as you can see, and the other probe here. Do you see nothing? Normally, we should get a continuity here, but we didn't get anything. So, let's check, for example, this one, the good one. Okay. So, one probe here and the second probe here. Do you see? We get zero ohm in the multimeter. For this one, for example, this kind of capacitor, so its symbol is like this, as you can see. This one or this one. But for this kind of capacitors, as you can see, it's simple, as you can see, is the same as this one, but we have here plus, as you can see. Because those capacitors are polarized capacitors. You can also find another kind of simple, basically this simple, without plus here, but this one means minus, okay? So, so the reference, the reference is C for this, kind and this kind, or sometimes you can find PC or PC. As you can see here, we have C9 here, over here C9, okay? And for the fuse that we have seen before, we have its symbol, as you can see here, and we have F1. This is basically the fuse, okay? And for the capacitor, we have here C9. The same also for the motherboard, as you can see, we have here, over here, we have C514, okay? So, to test this capacitor, as you can see, let's take this one, for example, using the continuity option. I can just put one probe here, as you can see, and the other probe here, so focus in the multimeter, as you can see. Do you see? The capacitor charge and discharge, as you can see. Do you see? Charge and discharge means this capacitor is a good capacitor. Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to teach you electronic component names, functions, symbols, and testing using the multimeter. Okay. So here we have a lot of electronic components. Of course, I'm going to teach you this electronic component that I have here and also others. So please, this is a very important video, especially for beginners. You gonna understand everything about electronic components. So let's get started. But please, before diving into details, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated for future videos like this one. For anyone who want to join me in, in my Patreon page, you are very welcome. I can be your mentor in my Patreon page and I can even give you my WhatsApp number if you become a mentorship experience member. 
So let's dive in into the course. So first of all, because this course I made especially this course for beginners, I will first of all explain to you the multimeter a little bit. So this is the multimeter as you can see here. This is a digital multimeter. Okay, so here as you can see we have the diode and the continuity option. So usually we use this option in order to test diode or to test the continuity. You can, we can also use it to test inductors, capacitors, etc. So here we have the resistance as you can see. We have 200 ohm, we have 2 k ohm, 20 kilo ohm, etc. So here, for example, you should pay attention. If you want, for example, to test a resistor with 10 ohm, you should select this option here. If you want, for example, to test a 300 ohm, okay, you should not select this one. You should go and select always the higher value, okay? And here, as you can see, we have basically the voltage. This is continuous voltage. If you want, for example, to check like this as you can see battery or to check a dc voltage in the motherboard we're gonna see all this and here as you can see we have the alternating voltage if you want to check for example an alternating voltage here we have amps okay in alternating voltage and in continuous voltage and here we have the farad if you want to check a capacitor okay and for the transistors, you can use this one, but I prefer to use props, okay, for NPN and PNP transistor. This is just a quick explanation about the multimeter. And always the read probe, do not forget the read probe, you should always put it here where we have V and here the black one in the common, common probe, as you can see here. And if you want to measure the amps, Okay, then you should move on this probe here if you want to to test many amps or to this probe if you want to test amps under 20 amps. Okay, so let's get started. So as I told you, we gotta see names, functions, symbols, and testing. So let's begin, for example, with the inductor. Okay, here this one basically we called it inductor or coil. Okay, you can find this type or even these types also, as you can see. Basically, we find this one in the desktop motherboard, and also you can find this one in the desktop motherboard, and this one in switch mode power supply board, like this one, for example. Okay. And for this two, you can find it on the desktop motherboard, like this one, for example, or this one, as you can see over here. So the name, this is inductor or coil. So we called it inductor, okay, inductor or coil. Okay, so this is inductor or coil, okay? So for the function, the inductors and coils are usually used to adjust the current in the circuit, okay? That's why we find it in the output. For example, here, you can find an inductor like, this is basically the symbol, and then here, a capacitor that is connected to the ground, an electrolytic capacitor like this one or like this one. This one we find it as you can see in switch mode power supplies like this and this kind we find it as you can see this kind of capacitor we find it in motherboards like this one as you can see over here. Okay? So then here you will get for example output. For example, 5 volts. Okay, so the inductor, its reference is L. Okay, the reference is L. Okay, we can also add here reference. Reference. Okay, so the name is inductor or coil. The reference is L. You can find L in the motherboard or PL. 
So as we have here, if you focus here, we have L. Do you see L15 for this inductor? We have here, as you can see, L53 for this inductor. Okay, so the function is to stabilize the current. Usually, it increases the current in the circuit. Okay, and for the symbol, this is the symbol for inductor. Okay, and for how to test inductor, easy. You can just use the multimeter and you should select the continuity option since the inductor is just a wire okay so let's select the continuity option in the multimeter okay so let's check if this, the continuity is selected correctly as you can see okay so let's begin with this one for example for this one here this is one inductor i can just put one probe here and the second one here, I should get, as you can see, the continuity in the multimeter. This one, the same working principle, one probe here, the other probe here, as you can see. So, for this one, basically, it contains, as you can see, two inductors. Do you see? A different color. This is the first inductor, the red one, and here, the orange one is the second inductor. So, this is the first inductor, these two. And here we have the second inductor. So let's check it. So one from here and the other here. So let's check one from here and the second here. As you can see in the multimeter. So let's check the second one here also. This inductor also. So so one from here, as you can see, and the other here. And the second from here. As you can see in the middle. So these two inductors are good. So let's put the, the inductors here. So this is good for inductor. So let's see another component. So let's see for example the fuse. Do you see? Here we have two fuses as you can see. And we have here another fuse. This is basically a burned fuse. So for the name we have fuse. The reference always for the fuse, as you can see, its reference. So this is basically, as you can see here, the symbol for the fuse. You can find F. So the reference is F, or sometimes you can find PF. Sometimes, okay, you can find this symbol or even this symbol as you can see like resistor also this is the symbol for the fuse for the function its function is protection it protects the circuit from high current that's why we find over here if you focus here as you can see so let's see do you see here we have three amps over here 250 volt so this is the maximum voltage and amps that this fuse can support okay so its function is protection protection okay for this fuse for example we have 3 amps okay and 250 volt so this fuse is blown out is damaged because it could be the current that pass 3 amps or the voltage that pass 250 okay that's why this one is burned out so to test it as you can see here we're gonna just put one probe here as you can see and the other probe here do you see nothing normally we should get a continuity here but we didn't get anything so let's check for example this one the good one okay so one probe here and the second probe here do you see we get zero ohm in the multimeter let's check this one also i don't know if this one is good or not let's check this one also is good but this one as you can see is burned okay do you see the thin wire here do you see the thin wire and we have a wire inside it. 
So this is it for diffuse. So the reference, as you can see, is F or BF. The name is fuse. We called it we called it fuse. Okay, like this. So the function is protection. The symbol, this is basically the symbol, this one or this one, and to test it, we test it using the multimeter and using the continuity option, okay? So let's move on right now to another component. So the capacitor, as you can see here. Here we have many, basically we have many capacitors, as you can see. Let's gather this component in one side, okay? So now we're gonna see these capacitors. Basically, we have two kinds of capacitors the ceramic capacitors and electrolytic capacitors okay so these capacitors these two and this one we find it in the electro in the switch one power supplies like this one for example here okay or this card also we have capacitors here as you can see and this kind of capacitor as i told you before we find it here as you can see in motherboards okay so how can so so for the capacitor for this one for example this kind of capacitor so its symbol is like this as you can see this one or this one but for this kind of capacitors as you can see its symbol as you can see, is the same as this one, but we have here plus, as you can see. Because those capacitors are polarized capacitors. You can also find another kind of symbol, basically this symbol, without plus here, but this one means minus, okay? So we use these capacitors to filter, for filtering, filtering purposes. Just also, we use it also for, for filtering, filtering, but especially we remove the noise, okay, the noise in the circuit. But this one, in order to transform, as you can see, the alternating current to DC current, okay? So the reference, the reference is C for this kind and this kind or sometimes you can find pc or pc for as you can see here as you can see here we have c9 here over here c9 okay and for the fuse that we have seen before we have its symbol as you can see here and we have f1 this is basically the fuse okay and for the capacitor we have here c9 the same also for the motherboard as you can see we have here over here we have c 514 okay so we have seen the reference so we have seen the reference names okay function okay the filter it filter the current the symbols this is basic symbols and testing so let's now check these capacitors basically to check these capacitors we can use as you can see over here we can use the continuity option or directly we can use the farad here we can test it using this option let's first use the continuity option so to test this capacitor as you can see let's take this one for example using the continuity option i can just put one probe here as you can see and the other probe here so focus in the multimeter as you can see do you see the capacitor charge and discharge as you can see do you see charge and discharge means this capacitor is a good capacitor okay so let's check for example the ceramic capacitor here we should not get a continuity if you get a continuity like this means the capacitor is bad so let's check so this is a good one let's check this one also so this capacity also is good. Let's check this one also. You see, charge and discharge. This one also is good, okay? So we can use the continuity option. 
or we can use as you can see do these options where we have nanofarad and microfarad so let's pick for example any capacitor here this one for example okay so before using this option here you should make sure that you know the capacitance or the capacitor here we have 400 volt 22 22 microfarad so we gonna we should find here 22 microfarad or 24 21 no problem so let's go to the multimeter and set the multimeter to microfarad here we have two microfarad normally the capacitor in the capacitor we have 22 as you can see so we should go to the second option the higher value always the higher value as you can see here do you see in the multimeter we have two we should go to a higher option as you can see here we have 200 in the multimeter we have 200 microfarad why because we have 22 in the capacitor always you should select the higher option than the, that component contain okay so let's check it right now so here we have the negative terminal over here we're gonna put the black probe here as you can see okay and the red probe in the other side nothing in the multimeter so let's check another capacitor i bring another capacitor this capacitor for example how we have here as you can see 150 microfarads and i have another one here we have 47 microfarads so let's check okay we have the negative terminal over here and the positive terminal here so nothing it could be the multimeter i don't know it could be the multimeter so let's check this one also so nothing in the multimeter so the problem it could be the multimeter anyway so for the capacitor as i told you we have seen the reference c or pc we have seen its name is capacitor the function as you can see the filter it, it is used for filtering purposes the symbol here we have the symbols for electrolytic capacitor and symbol for ceramic capacitor and here so here i can even here we have ceramic okay ceramic capacitor okay and here we have electrolytic capacitor okay and for testing we have testing it okay so let's see another component so basically here we have as you can see the next component that we have is the bridge rectifier do you see here we have bridge rectifier so basically the bridge rectifier as you can see here contain four terminals okay so here we have plus here we have minus and here we have easy as you can see plus minus is so to test this bridge rectifier you should always put the negative probe in the positive terminal the inverse or put the read probe in the negative terminal and test with these two pins you should find two diodes so let's do it so let's check this one first so as you can see here we have plus so i gotta put the black probe here here i should find a diode 500 or 600 so first let's go to diet option as you can see here we have diet option do you see 500 grow voltage we have the first diode here we have the second diet okay if we swap the probes as you can see if i put the positive probe in the positive terminal nothing in the multimeter nothing in the multimeter means the bridge rectifier is good let's check this also as you can see so here we have the positive terminal okay i should put the red probe here 
as you can see, the, the black probe in the positive terminal. So let's make like this, okay? And this probe once here we get we get we get the first diode drop voltage. Let's check this probe also, also as you can see. If I swap the probes using the same working principle as you can see, nothing in the multimeter, nothing in the multimeter. Okay, so this is also a good bridge rectifier. So this is bridge rectifier. We call it basically, okay, bridge, okay, the bridge, bridge, okay, okay, or a rectifier. Okay, rectifier. So <clears throat> its function basically it's exactly like the capacitor is as you can see when we have the old alternating voltage like this one after it is applied to the to the rectifier over here we get as you can see here a continuous voltage it's not a continuous 100 percent but we get just the positive alternators Okay, and when this positive alternance is applied to this capacitor, as you can see, to the capacitor, okay, we get this voltage, as you can see here. We get like this voltage, DC voltage, okay? So the function for the symbols, here is the symbol. You can find just one diode like this one or for this kind of bridge rectifier basically we have four diodes as you can see this is the first diode this is the second diode as you can see over here and then we have the third diode and then as you can see we have here the fourth diode here basically we have plus okay this plus here this is the plus connected as you can see to the capacitor and the capacitor connected to the ground and here we have minus okay that is connected directly to the ground okay so this is the sample for the branch rectifier so for testing we have testing okay so i hope that you enjoyed the video so basically we gonna see other components in the next video maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow so basically this is the the crystal oscillator as you can see here the crystal oscillator this is its reference as you can see for the crystal oscillator so this the symbol basically its reference could be x or y okay we're gonna see it so then we have the transform as you can see the transform could be like this okay it contains many inductors inside it. Then we have the relay. Always the relay, you gotta find one inductor and a switch. And a switch, as you can see. This is basically the relay. We can also see how to test it. Then we have the short key diode. Here we have its symbol over here. Okay. And the MOSFET. Basically, the MOSFET, as you can see, we have always drain, okay, and we have, or we have gate and drain, and here we have source. I'm going to teach you also the MOSFET, etc. In the next part, I'm going to continue explaining to you other components. Basically, I have a lot of components that I'm going to teach you, as you can see, one by one. I'm going to teach you all this kind of components. So we're gonna see the reference, name, function, symbols, and testing. So please, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share the video, and like the video because your likes and engagement motivate me to create more and more videos for you. And for anyone who wants to join me in my Patreon page, feel free to join me, and I can be your mentor for anyone who wants me as a mentor i can help you fix your computers or laptops using whatsapp number of course 
and of course if you select the mentorship experience thank you very much and see you in the next video